Where's Karen? There's Karen. I'm here. You? Where's <laughs> you? I'm here. Can you see me? <laughs> now I can see you. <laughs> Perfect. Amazing. So we are live. Welcome, everyone. Um, as you come in, just let us know that you can see us and hear us um, and where you're coming from. I believe there's a Maggie in the house already. Hi, Maggie. Hey, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Aha. I yes. See you. And, and Lou, Lou from Florida. Yay, it's Lou. Amazing. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course. Thank Karen you. was just saying she wasn't expecting Lou to turn up. Yeah. I was not. Liar. <laughs> Lies. Lies. Uh, so Maggie and Lou, can you just let us know that you can see me, Karen, and the presentation, please? Assuming you can. Or not. Yes. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Cool beans. Cool. cool. And also, just a quick one for you guys. If you scroll down beneath the presentation, can you see a questions section where you can enter your questions as we go? Just let me know. That's the best half, Lou. Don't worry. <laughs> nice. How about now? Better? I'm seeing all of my face, so that's. I have my face. I do have a best side, to be fair. The when, it, when the camera flips you, it always messes me up because I'm like, I think I'm fixing this side of my head, and I'm actually. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I'm like, mm. yeah, can't handle the flip at all. Right, so I think we're ready to get going. Um, yeah. Lou and Maggie, can you just let me know if you can see a questions section and a polls section at the bottom? Excellent. Cool. So that question section, any questions you have as we go, because Karen's going to Karen's gonna be bringing all, all the info as we go on. If you have questions, just enter them in there. And when we get to the question section at the end, we'll be able to go through them one by one. And just, yeah, let us know at any point if if you have any problems technical-wise or if Karen's talking too fast because she does that sometimes. Totally. Right. The Amazing. hands are too distracting. I can't really stop the hands. It's just, <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> right. So, ready to roll, Karen? Yes, let's do this. Cool. So, again, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I, I'm really excited about doing this 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 chat today because Karen and I have been talking about this for absolutely months. I think back in August when I was in Cyprus, we first discussed this. And I think what really connected for us is we both we both definitely geeks, but in different ways. Me more from a systems side. I'm all about systems and processes, but I've also always been interested in in the customer research side, because I'm sure all of us have done our fair share of uh, customer, ideal client avatar, customer avatar kind of worksheets where you're supposed to know what is their favorite soup and what keeps them up at 2 a.m. in the, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it always feels so nebulous. And yes, I get it. I need to collect that data, but how do I actually do it? And even when you get the, the worksheet where you look at, Okay, how old are they? Where do they live? How many kids do they have? Well, that's great. I want that intelligence, but how do I get it? And I think the answer is typically speak to your customers. But again, what you discover is that they you can you can totally be misled by by the data if you don't ask the right questions, if you don't have a way to actually gather it, document it and use it. So Karen's going to be showing us that today. And she's going to be sharing a powerful framework for gathering actionable customer data. <laughs> so powerful. So Super powerful. Muscles, all the but it's not just about gathering it. It's also we're going to look at what do you actually do with it. So it's a four-step process and a framework that really helps you contextualize it. Um, and, yeah, so, so Karen introduced me to a book that you guys may or may not know. It's called When Coffee and Kale Compete. And it really brings up this whole idea that what you think your your products or services are competing with in the market is not, in actual fact, often what they are competing with. So, for example, coffee. We think of the competition of coffee being something like Red Bull or a chocolate bar or something like that. But in reality, when you look at 
what your customers are looking for and the actual need that they they want met you may find that the actual competition is something else altogether and that karen's going to dive into that whole idea so this quote here really stood out for me and it stood out for karen because it's on her website <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's the focus on customer motivation is the key to successful ongoing innovation and business and the thing here is that innovation is is a verb it's something we need to all keep doing and the best way to do that and know how we need to innovate is to know the customer so what are we going to find out today why are we actually here why are you giving us your time you're going to be able to really get to know the people that matter in your business and that that's really the only way that you can connect meet people where they are and create the right products services marketing messages testimonials all of the social proof so karen's going to walk us through the actual framework so you can collect the data and know what to do with it which is the final point actually turning that into social proof products services etc so we never like to stick on this aspect too long we're on a bore fest but just to give you a little context of of who i am and why my wife is abusing me in that picture. So we're a team of two, husband and wife team. Um, as I said, I'm the systems and techie side, and she's the strategy side. And that really worked well to, uh, for us. Um, it enables her, as she likes to put it, to come up with the ideas and for me to implement them. I find I that, that vaguely that. insulting, but yeah, it works for us. <laughs> and what we do is we help service-based small business owners, primarily online, but also some offline service-based businesses to create referral-worthy client experiences. And that is, it's really all about a process. The idea is that you can't, you don't drop the ball on things you have systems for. So Karen, let us know about yourself and your hand waving. Yes, um, he's uh, full disclosure. He stole this off my about page where I was like, this is what we look like when we talk. I usually don't look that fancy. There's other examples where there might be a dinosaur head. Uh, but uh, yes, I love talking to people, believe it or not. Um, and I love interviewing people. I have a background in social science research and evaluation for nonprofits. So I've been interviewing people and doing focus groups for like 12 years at this point. Um, and so I took all of that knowledge and started using it to help my small business friends and it has grown into this thing. And I fully nerd out about it all the time as James will tell you. And um, I just really get excited about all of the potential of the information that you can get just from having regular conversations with people. And that's what I'm trying to convince everybody else of. <laughs> So that's what I do. I just love interviewing people's clients. So amazing. Me. Talk with so me. before we actually kick off and get into the meat and potatoes, if you look right down at the bottom, you'll see a polls section. And let us know in the poll, cast your vote, and let us know which of these four applies to you. Or if there's a something else entirely, let us know in the chat. So I want to gather client intel, but the whole thing seems overwhelming. I don't know how to start or it just, it's too much. Or I don't have a clear systematic way to gather and store the data. I know that's a big pain. Or if you've gone a little further than that and you actually know how to gather it, but that's fine. Now I've got this massive table of, of client voice of customer feedback. I have no idea what to do with it, how to actually extract the good stuff and turn it into something. Or if it's a bit of all of the above, and again, if it's something else altogether, oh, okay, coming in already. All of the above, yep, <laughs> yeah, there we so go. We got, yeah, we got, <laughs> we got all of the above, and we have a couple of, I want to gather client intel, but the whole thing just seems overwhelming. And even a don't have a clear systematic way to gather and store the data. Cool, Karen, you've you've basically got your your work cut out for you across the full spectrum Yay. of the four steps. <laughs> we all of the above took care of it. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, just to, just to contextualize it, I think this is a really tough part of, of doing business, but it's also, I kind of think of it as the table stakes for having a successful business. You've got to know the people and having this framework would be a huge help. So I'm looking forward to finding out a bit more about it. So without <laughs> further ado, we're going to show you a Venn diagram that Karen has been slaving over. It's sort of an, it's sort of a vortex. I've started thinking of it as more of a vortex. <laughs> it's a black hole exactly, but it's like a vortex. 
Um, okay, well, thank you for all of that. And I know that, yeah, it can be a totally overwhelming topic, but before we get into the more overwhelming parts, um, I just wanna talk about um, the whole concept of what is your client data for? Like, why in the world do you need to talk to people? What is the information that you learn when you talk to people and then how can it help your business? So that is why I finally figured out how to put this in a visual form so that it can kind of make sense to you. Um, before we dive into that though, I just kind of wanna talk about when I'm saying data, just get into terms. When I'm talking about client data or client research, what, like, what am I talking about? And basically the client data is any information that you get from activities like conversations, written or verbal, like notes that you take, transcripts, intake forms, applications, feedback forms, surveys, any e email conversations, web chat conversations, anytime you are interacting with your clients and they are giving you some sort of information about themselves or their situation or what they need, um, all of that counts as client data. So it can, can take pretty much any form, as long as it's some sort of transfer of information from them to you, whatever that looks like in your business, that's your client data. So this, while we're talking about this concept in this framework, it's not this rigid, it has to be a survey, it has to be an interview, it has to be this sort of thing. It's whatever that looks like, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm like looking in the chat and I shouldn't be looking in the chat. I'm going to stop. Um, but whatever, it's adjustable, it's flexible, whatever it looks like for your business, talking with my hands, it's not going to stop. It's only going to get worse. It's just goals. Um, but whatever that looks like for your business, then that's the correct answer. So it doesn't have to fit into somebody else's rigid structure of what their customer research or customer data collection looks like, you get to design it for your own business. This just gives you a way of approaching it so that you can see the value. So speaking of the value of um, like, what what is, the, what is your client data good for? And I spent a lot of time trying to explain this to people and it always comes out in this, I just start rattling off, well, you can use it for this and this and this and this and this. And I finally, spend some time trying to boil it down to the main things. The main thing is the main thing, right? And, oh, go back. You went too far. I'm not done yet. Go back. <laughs> and that is the insights, feedback, proof, and messaging. And you can kind of, the red stuff, insights and feedback falls under the whole category of like, you're learning what they're thinking about and you're learning their reaction to your services. So the insights are the opportunities for innovation. This is a lot of the stuff that's on the front end and the customer discovery phase when you're talking to people when they're first coming to you, when you're trying to figure out what do they need, um, what, what opportunities do I have to serve them that might they might not be served somewhere else. Feedback is all of the feedback and the reaction, the feedback is their reaction to your services. So it's how you see how your clients are reacting to your business in the context of their lives. And it's basically how you know if what you're doing is working because they're giving you feedback and then you can make adjustments, improvements. Proof is essentially evidence provided by your clients and others that you can be trusted. So it's them saying, hey, she did a good job. Hey, they really delivered on what they promised. And here's my quote to prove it. Here's my business success to prove it. And then messaging is literally all the words. <laughs> so every time they're telling you stuff, save it. I'm like, no, all of it is worth something. All of it is their client language. Anytime you're talking to a copywriter and they're like, well, we need to talk. You know, what's what language is your client speaking? What words are they using? They're literally giving you all those words every time you're collecting data from them, having email conversations, that intake conversation, all the way throughout. They are giving you that information that you can then use in your messaging and your copy and your websites and all that. So those are, that's kind of like the goal here. These are the benefits that we can get from collecting all the data 
And now we're going to jump into the fun framework part. To the framework part, um, just a quick one. Yes. Can yes. you, Yes. the Let thing that know. really stuck out for me initially was the relationships side. Oh, I totally did. <laughs> and we chatted. We, yes, the, the purple, purple dot in the middle. middle. We chatted about this a bit because yes. certainly from our, from the perspective of our business relationships, well, let me take it a step back. Business depends on relationships. A successful business is based on trust, is based on relationships. For us in particular, we are we really, really focus on on individual relationships, building those and and really collaborating. That's how that's how this came about. Like getting to know the other person and seeing how you can collaborate. So can you just elaborate a little bit on 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 what relationships means in this in the sense of this model? Yes. I totally like spaced and was moving on in my head and relationships was the thing that I was trying to figure out how to show the most because when we start collecting data, we get wrapped up in the bog down kind of in the monotony of, well, I have to do this and I have to do this. And what I want people to realize that every time you have contact with your customer, you are hopefully strengthening your relationship with them. So at the beginning, throughout the service delivery of whatever you're doing for them, and especially in the follow-up phase and where you're staying in touch with them, letting them know um, that you care about them and you care about their successful progress on what they're trying to achieve. So I think about relationship just being something that is connected to all of these and is interwoven and thinking about instead of, so here's my soapbox all wrapped up in a diagram because thinking about instead of what is the least amount of human contact I can have to get the data I need is how can I be strengthening my relationships with my clients each time I need to reach out to them and make contact with them. So think about strengthening relationships instead of I don't want to talk to people. I just want to click it and forget it and have all the data come to me. So um, that's really kind of what I feel is important when we look at all these is that you aren't just do, sending out a follow-up survey. You aren't just bothering somebody. You're letting them know, hey, I want to know how you're doing. Is there anything else I can help you with? So the whole way through, you're trying to strengthen the relationship. And that makes you more referable, like, which is the whole grail, thing. <laughs> because, the, well, we talk. Yeah. Everyone talks about the no, like, and trust at the front. I feel like, and to me, the no and the like are at the front, and the trust doesn't really show up until you've reached the end, because you have to finish mm -hmm. delivering what you said you were going to deliver, and then they really trust you. And so I feel like we were like, oh, no, I can trust enough yeah, to buy. But sense, to me, yeah. trust doesn't stop at the beginning. That part of it goes all the way through. And if you drop the ball somewhere in the middle, that trust goes away and, and there's no like longer no like and trust. trust. <laughs> so is that? Yeah. Right, yeah. we're ready for there's, the, there's, that. For the there's framework. a lot of that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Step one. Okay, so before I start explaining all this, um, I know uh, James had at the beginning kind of like what you'll learn today, but I kind of really just have two big takeaways that I would like you to think about, and I have lots of more to come. But the ones I want you to think about is what we just looked at, which is understanding the potential that your client data has for your business, like what can it do for you, and two, is what we're about to start talking about, which is how to start looking at your data as part of your whole business system. So I know he loves systems and this all fits in with what they do. I'm just like, we're just systems geek all over the place. Um, but instead of, oh, I need to learn about my customers. I need to do some upfront surveys. I need to pick their brains and having it be really piecemeal if you think about it in terms of fitting into your whole business process and figuring out where that data collection is already happening and where you might be able to do a little extra or just pay attention to stuff that might be happening and just fit it into the business system that's already there, it can provide a whole lot of value. So I'm going to go into this one. So 
A few things up front. The idea of getting your client intelligence is exciting, but the thought of actually doing it can feel really overwhelming, which I know at least one of you clicked the overwhelming button <laughs> and all of the above to me counts as yes. So that's like three technical counts for overwhelming. Um, so like I just said, first, you're probably collecting a lot more data than you think from your clients, and you just might not have seen the potential for what you have. When I talk to people, like there's email conversations, there's notes that they've taken from intake or onboarding calls, and they have a whole lot of data, which can itself be overwhelming because you're like, well, now I have to look at it and then I have to think and then I have to make decisions. And you're just like, oh, that's a lot of work. So what I'm trying to lay out here is a way of approaching it. And I like to tell people start from now. Don't worry about data debt. Don't worry about all the things sitting in your computer and on your files. Just think if I were starting this now and where I'm hoping to start collecting this information now, how would I set it up? Okay. So um, when I walk through this, about go ahead. Debt, but now I've heard about it, I am a bit worried. Now you're worried and I wasn't worried about it. It's like I, you've heard of the idea of idea debt, right? Where you've got ideas. Too okay. Many ideas? Um, You've got ideas that you've never right, brought right. to life and they're just weighing on so you and you think you'll do them someday and you just need to let yeah. them go. Data debt's basically the same thing. Anything older than six months isn't going to be as useful anyways right. because everyone changes so quickly. Um, you can't hear anything. Carrie can't hear anything. Uh-oh. All right. Hopefully she can refresh and get it back working again. Um, can everyone else hear yeah, us? Just one thing. If you're just having any trouble track. with sound... Uh, you might be on Safari. Yes, Megan can hear, Luke can hear. Okay. Chrome, Chrome is best with webinar. Okay. So just try coming in on Chrome if you're having any trouble. Okay, cool. Um, but sorry, so as I go through this, I want you to pay attention to what type of data you can collect in each phase and then what that data is for. That's really kind of what I was trying to design this framework to look at is where are you in the business process? What kind of data can I collect here? And what good is it for me? Like, what can I do with it? And that's as far as we're going to go. I'm going to try not to dive too deep into all of the how, because we don't have that much time today. Um, but phase one is the assess or like determining your client needs. So this is when you're doing your intake. You're getting to know your client or potential client. You've got these are like discovery calls, onboarding, sales calls, all the things that you do in your business to get to know who this new client is, what they're looking for, what kind of services they say they want, or what kind of progress they're trying to make. Um, and when, it, when you're determining how or if you can help them, and this is different for everybody. So this is that part where you just have to think, how does this fit into my business? What does this look like in my business? All right, come back and okay. I'm just not gonna look at the chat. Not no distraction. Chat. Okay, so no distraction. It's the squirrels everywhere. Um, okay, so going down to the next one, type of data. The, the thing you are trying to capture in this phase is essentially their before picture. Um, I'm going to use a fitness, like a personal trainer metaphor as we go through this. If you want to just kind of a good example that helps you follow along so that you can imagine it working in a business. Um, so anytime, any data gathering here that helps show where your client is right now in time before you've helped them. So examples of the type of data or the collection, the data collection you might be doing at this phase would be intake forms, notes from calls, transcripts from recorded calls, applications, assessments, all of that stuff where you're like, give me all the information, fill this out, let's have a conversation whatever that looks like. Um, just to give you a fit, my fitness trainer example. So a trainer meets with a new client, it take, they take their measurements, they take a before photo, they might interview them about their current exercise and eating behavior, ask them what their goals are for hiring a trainer, like what is what are they hoping to achieve? And they might have them do a physical assessment to measure mobility, baseline strength and fitness levels. And then all of this is recorded and stored for later comparison. So for right now, they've got all that data and they're thinking, okay, this is all gonna go in their file so that we can look at it as they go and look at it at the end of their personal training uh, services 
to see how much progress they've made. They're also going to keep that information that the client said during their interview talking about goals. And that kind of information is what I was talking about when you were looking at getting copy and messaging and areas for innovation. So that's the language they are using before they have been helped by you and learned all of your jargon and learned all of your systems and learned all the stuff that you're going to teach them. Those are their words coming to you at the beginning. So those are also going to be the words that other people who have not yet hired you are going to use to describe their situation. So that's kind of where that fits, um, which goes into what's the data for. It can do two big things. It gives you something to compare later and it gives you the language that the new, new customers are using when they come to you. So outcomes and messaging are the big ones from this phase. Next phase. After assess, then we get into, I call it monitor, but it's essentially the actual delivery of your service or product. Um, most of you are probably already doing this really well. It's tracking your processes. So you've got a process in place even if you don't have it written down really formally, you have a process in place where, okay, then first you pay the invoice, then you sign the contract or whatever order you have things, and then they just work through the process and you have that in place. So you're probably already doing this one really well or pretty well. You just might be able to see the potential for improvement or additional data benefits that you might get out of it. So if we're looking at um, like I, the nerdy version of this is process and output data. So it's what you're actually doing, the behaviors that you are doing, the behaviors or actions that your clients are supposed to be taking. Um, you're delivering the service, you're following your own checklist, they've got homework, this, all that stuff. Um, and making sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So back to my fun fitness example, um, the trainer might create a workout program for the client. They deliver it on time. The client is supposed to log their workouts and report that back to the trainer. They might have so many personal sessions with the trainer. They're gonna show up to those sessions. All of that information gets tracked. They also might have check-ins where they do measurements and just make sure that this is where the monitoring part happens, where they monitor, is everyone doing what they're supposed to be doing? Are there any problems? So this is really a good opportunity if you've got this kind of process set up and system, yay system, and that this is where you all might be living in Asana if you don't already love Asana because you can track stuff really easily it's, he finally got me started on it this year. I'm finally an Asana user. I can't believe I finally crossed over, but I am. And it's wonderful. Um, but you have to find a way to use it that works for you. And I did with his help. But if you are, are paying close attention and you have a plan for monitoring everyone's progress through the delivery cycle, you can troubleshoot much quicker and react and see things coming. Like if, if the personal trainer is like, you missed a couple of your workouts last week. Is everything okay? And then one they sec, talk sec. with the client. I'm just getting a lot of Again, echo yes. on my side. I'm not sure if everyone else is getting. Oh, I have some for you too. Let's just check. Is anyone That's getting true. echo from either me or Karen? No echo. Okay, perfect. It's my side. I'll, I'll... Cool. All right. Okay. Yeah, I've got echo from well, you, James, but... I, yeah, I'll just listen but to just, you. That's just me. It works me. for me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, like I was saying, you can check in with the client. So he can say, hey, you've missed a couple of workouts. Is everything okay? That gives him an opportunity to reach out to the client and just touch base. And they're like, well, you told me to do these this particular exercise, but I'm really bad at it. So I've been avoiding the gym because I didn't want to do it. And they're like, oh, well, we can fix that. Let's try this other exercise and modification. Let's make this change to the program so that you can still be successful. And just the whole idea of monitoring the progress, that the data purpose of that data is to check in with them and make sure that 
they are progressing the way they want to and that you are holding up your end of the bargain essentially and that they know that right it's a communication this is another part of that relationship building instead of them signing the contract and you're like okay i'll let you know when i'm done and i know everyone's businesses are different and we have different levels of contact with people but if you kind of plan in those touch points into the process it lets you check in keep everyone engaged in the process and just a lot happier along the way. Um, so moving on to phase three, cause I know monitoring is super exciting, super duper. Um, this, this is where I have that little keep going in there because a lot of the time, especially if you're really busy and you have a lot of clients and you're doing really well, we, we do the first part and we do the second part. And then we're like, have a nice life. That was great. Good times. And, we drop, we drop people there. And I have a lot of stories from other colleagues and from clients who made a, like follow-up purchase decisions based on the fact whether or not the company followed up with them or not. Like I had somebody I know who hired a copywriting company and they did great work. They loved the work they did. And then they just dropped them. They didn't check in to see how everything was going. They like literally no contact after they last delivered their last piece of copy. And she was like, that just left a bad taste in my mouth. Like they just didn't even care about anything afterwards, or it didn't seem like they cared. Even if they might've cared, they didn't actually reach out. And so she hired somebody else the next time she needed copy because that, that mattered to her. So this is where that relationship part really matters. Um, but so part three, review, follow up with your clients. Um, the date, this is where you get the after picture. <laughs> this is the other reason it's so important because you got your before picture during the assessment phase, and now you're getting the real after picture. And this might be something, this is going to look different for everybody. So for example, for the fitness person, this might be, they schedule a, um, a wrap up session at the end, say they have a six month personal training period, right? They schedule a wrap up session as their last trainer session and they do all the assessments again. They do all their measurements. They take their after photo and they, you know, get permission possibly from the client to share that as social proof. Like, can I use your before and after photo when I'm promoting my personal training services? And they're really happy because they lost, you know, 20 pounds or got super crazy muscles or whatever their goal was or they fit into their wedding dress, you know, whatever their goal was, if you help them achieve that, they're going to be a lot more likely to say, sure, you can brag about my results and tell people about it. But this is your chance to not only get the results, but also talk to them about what the experience was like. So you get to ask them for feedback. And I know feedback is, can be terrifying, but once you start actually letting people know that you genuinely want to hear how it went for them and anything that was great and anything that wasn't as great and, or was difficult, caused them anxiety, all of these different things. You let them know that you really do genuinely want to know people will open up to you and tell you, well, you know, the workout sessions were always at eight in the morning and I'm, horrible and grumpy in the morning. Could we maybe move them in the afternoon? It's, it's never anything so horrible that we think it is. It's usually little things that stuff in their life has, a, you know, got, you know, got in the way, or we just learn more about their situation, even more after we've been spending time with them. And letting them take that time to reflect on their experience is also super valuable. Most people are, especially if you have a very transactional relationship, you don't have time to talk and really get into, well, how are you feeling today? How do you feel about this process? And we just, we get really busy and we deliver our products and we check in and we make sure that they've done what they need to do. And we don't take that time to reflect. And I can tell you personally from interviewing a lot of people's clients, they really appreciate that ability to reflect. They discover things that they hadn't realized. They think about benefits that, like I was speaking to one of my clients, clients, <laughs> and the, the client does cash flow management, like coaching and helping people with their cash flow. And I was on the phone with the client and she's, 
starts naming off dates. She's like, well, I paid off my last credit card on this date. And then she realized on the call she'd been debt free for 12 months. And she was like losing it. She's like, oh my gosh, I've been debt free for a year. And like, she's like, I gotta go celebrate. And so there was just, if you give people time to slow down and reflect on their experience, they appreciate that. So that is another relationship building tool. And, and follow up to me is one of the, the most powerful of the phases because it lets you stop and reflect instead of just doing the same thing over and over again. It lets you learn what you could improve on. It lets you get their results and the experience and also learn after serving them what they think that was the most valuable thing about your service. Cause you've got that story they told you when they came to you, why they think they're hiring you which is the stuff that you can talk to new people about. But then you've got this stuff over here where like, well, you know, I really came here to lose 10 pounds, but I have more energy than I ever have before. Or I've met 10 new friends at my yoga strength power class. And now I have a new best friend group that I meet. And that's like, you learn about all these additional benefits. Well, just quickly, so we go to that's, the next. that's review. And then I'd the be, next I'd, one, because there's. Four. I'd be interested to know. I've, I've put a poll <laughs> yes, again at the bottom <laughs> whether I'm people totally... actually do have a process in place for following up with clients okay. on the tail end of a project or kind of as they progress, as you were talking about. So let us know in the poll. And I mean, as you were saying, Karen, like mm -hmm. the likelihood is that you do have a process, mm -hmm. but it might be a process in your head. You know that it's important and you do the thing, but it's, you kind of, it's somewhat disjointed. You don't remember the steps that you took and the order. Mm -hmm. And if you actually documented it, it would make it a whole lot more streamlined and, and much more likely that you'd actually get it done on time. So let us know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time, like, how am I going to follow up with this person? Or how am I going to document this this time? If you've taken the time to say, and I know yes. a lot of people have trouble. A yeah. lot of people I have think trouble that's a, with a the follow-up. shift that needs to be made, isn't it? In be, terms of, I don't reframe. want to bother anybody. And the, the benefit I see of doing this and looking at the whole picture is that mm -hmm. you can design the follow-up into the expectations at the beginning of the relationship. So when you're meeting with them at the beginning, you say, okay, we're going to do this. And then four weeks after I finish this, we're going to have a call and we're going to go over everything and, and see, um, you know, if you need any additional help, I want to get your feedback on how it went, however you want to frame it. Um, yeah. If you build that into the expectations at the beginning, you are just fulfilling your promise at the end when you have a follow-up call so instead of a, a case of setting asking for something additional or feeling like you're asking for something the, additional. I don't know what it's greasing, but makes it easier. Yeah, the wheel, the wheel, that's the one. And and looking at the poll, <laughs> the wheel, we've got the um, asking wheel, you know, the follow-up wheel, no process the framework place. wheel. So there's a, a big opportunity yes. for, for, for improvement and also just for mm -hmm massively ramping up the client experience that as we discussed is a is the great way to get referrals and more high quality clients coming out of it right and it doesn't have to be yeah. some elaborate process i know people who just do a simple feedback form with a couple of questions and then if there's anything that stands out they might reach out and follow up again and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about that. Is there anything I could do to fix that or help or hmm. refer you to someone else who might be able to help you on your journey on the next thing? So step four. Um, it's just additional opportunities to connect and help. Step four. Okay, so step four to me, like follow-up is huge. Update is if you've been doing the follow-up, then you've learned that there's some things that you might need to change about your business. And it, it might be little tiny things like you're having their follow-up conversation. They're like, I just wish that this could happen, or it would be really helpful if you did this one extra thing during our process, you know, whether it's a communication thing or they wanted to move their workouts to the afternoon 
you know, whatever kind of stuff it could be. It could be big, it could be small, but you've gotten some information from them and you've taken the time to review it and determine, you know, is this something that's going to be helpful for all of my clients? Is this something that just really applies to this person because they're a special case? You know, how, how important is this change for me? So say I decide, say I get complaints about the time of day for workouts, right? I'm the fitness trainer. So then I might add a question during my intake form that says, do you have a preferred time of day when you're at your best, when you would like to work out? It's, it could just be something as simple as that. It doesn't have to be anything. I have to reframe my entire business. I don't have to change my whole business model. It might just be little tweaks along the way. So then after you've made those changes, this gives you another opportunity to reach out to your client. So again, fitness example, say we have our wrap up session after our six months and then they've, they're they con supposedly continuing on their workout plan, right? I've made my little intake form change and I'm excited to tell them about it. I've gotten positive results from new clients. And so we schedule a follow-up call four weeks out and I say, hey, how's the workout plan going? Is there anything, is everything going okay? I wanted to let you know, I really appreciated your feedback about the time of day that you worked out. So I've added that into when I talk to new clients, right? And then, so you're like, hey, your feedback was helpful. It was useful. I'm using it to help benefit other people. Is there anything I can help you do to continue your success in your workout plan? And maybe they're struggling with motivation. Maybe you give them some resources that they could use, a new playlist, whatever it is that, that can help them. And if they get to the point where you're talking to them and they you realize they might just need more personal training help, you could offer that to them. This is a point where you could say, you know, you're a good, wonderful customer. Would you like to sign up for some more personal training this year or something like that? This is another opportunity for you to help them in some way, whether or not it's more sales or sending them somewhere where they could get additional help. It's also a great opportunity to ask for referrals because if you've done your job right, and of course the mail just got here, if you've done your job right, <laughs> I knew somebody would show up. There was a dog earlier, but I know if you've done your job right, you've earned the right to ask for a referral. Like, you know, if you let them know up front, I'm going to earn the right to ask you if you could refer me to your friends. And so this is another opportunity. If you've earned that right and you've shown that you're trustworthy, you could say, is there anybody that you think would benefit from my services? The workout person could hand them like cute little referral cards or whatever, or give them something. It's just another place for you to touch base with them, see how they're doing. And then say they do say, you know what? I need accountability. I need a personal trainer for this to work. Then that's what that little gray era goes into where you put your changes into action. You have a new baseline for them. And then you're going up to back to the monitoring where you're delivering services and all that. The guy's at my door, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, I'm supposed to answer. <laughs> Yay, webinar fail. <laughs> All right, you can go. All right, one second. I'm sorry, he's not go leaving. Go do it, go do it. <laughs> okay, one second, I promise. Cover for me. Right. Cover for me. So while Karen's tending to her admin, <laughs> Monica, welcome. Let us know if you can hear us okay. Um, and also, just give me a give me an idea while Karen's out of earshot. Is everything making sense? Are you are you seeing how this framework could actually apply to your business? Because I know theoretically she made it back. Like the, theoretically, Hi. it's it's um, it's easy to understand. Oh, but that's be, a good one. It's important that you understand how this could fit into your business, depending on the model. I know Millie, you have a SaaS business. Different people have service businesses. So yeah, Karen, I'm just saying. Are people understanding how this model actually applies in their business? Because we want to make sure they they come away with an understanding of at least a couple of things they could put in place. Correct. Yeah. Like as you go through this, I know I get into examples like with the fitness trainer, but I really want you to think about top down that in each of these phases of your business, asking yourself the questions of what type of data could I collect here based on the structure of my business and what could I do with that? So those are like really the core questions you can ask yourself. 
And if you want to show them the next thing, <laughs> I, I made a worksheet. It might do not freak out. I promise. It's not as freaky. <laughs> Stop for a minute just to make sure people uh, can see it okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And this is just, um, we, will, we will get you the links to these um, through Google Docs so that you can make a copy and save them yourself so that you can totally have this. Um, but this is basically that framework you were just looking at. I transferred it over to a table where with questions that help you answer each of those questions for your business. And then a couple slides later, we've got a blank one um, that you can download also and just fill out yourself. And the whole goal of this is to just give yourself the time and space to sit down and see if you can answer these questions. You know, most of them are super easy. How do you determine your client's needs? Like the top level is literally just what are you actions you take as you work with a client? And then as you go down, it gets into more nitty gritty questions. What kind of data are you capturing? Do you, and so this isn't necessarily, if you can't fill it out, then you've got lots of gaps, but it gives you something to think about. If you ask yourself the question, how are you capturing the client's situational information, like their status when they come to you? Are you taking notes? Are you recording? Like, what is your actual process for collecting that data? And then underneath that, under data use, like under the assess column and data use, how are you going to organize and use the baseline information? Are you going to store it for later? Are you going to put it in a spreadsheet? If you know, all the different nitty gritty pieces of the process, but this lets you kind of map it out over the course of one client's cycle through your business. And then you can see the areas where you already know the answer, you can answer it really easily. And then you might see areas where, okay, I, I haven't really thought about that, or that's something I've been meaning to do. Um, and it also might give you ideas just for what you could be doing that you currently aren't doing. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we also made, uh, I did an example one with the fitness trainer example, which it's super tiny, but when you print it out, it's totally legible, I promise. Um, where I went through and, and pretended I was a fitness professional and answered all of those questions as if that was my business. It's just to give you an example of what it might look like for that person. Um, obviously everyone's business is different. So, um, it's just to give you an idea of how, how you could fill it out in real life. Um, but that is, that's just a tool. Like, so if you were going to take away two, you know, two things, like I said, from this one being, what is the potential of the data that you can get? The second being, what would this look like if the data collection was baked in to the entire process of my business. And this just gives you kind of a way to, to plan out a top-down approach of, okay, this is what I would like to have in place. What are the parts I'm already doing? What are the parts I can do right now? How can I prioritize implementing these pieces and then implementing the use of that data? That makes sense. <laughs> no, I think um, I think the fitness example is really handy when you put it alongside the original, the previous one. It just makes it a little more tangible, and you can understand exactly what's going on. So that's that's great. And then the next step is filling out get. your own. Yay! Yeah. And even yeah, like even just going through the exercise of it. Like you might get there and. You know, if you've got for more complex businesses, obviously you might need a bigger chart. <laughs> but if if you're just trying to get a top down approach, like like for me, example, for the assess process, how do I get to know what my clients about my clients? We have a conversation. I frequently record it and have it transcribed. So it's like super easy. I'm going to save that information to talk to them at the end. I'm also going to save that information for messaging and copy in a spreadsheet and Airtable because Airtable, but that's a whole nother webinar. <laughs> we only have time for one today. But so thinking about it in terms of how this would fit into your business, 
Um, it can all be customized, but just keeping in mind that for each step you're working with the client, how, what kind of information are you already getting? How are you capturing it? And how are you using it? Ta-da. Like, I really want to dive into this. Big picture view is helpful, Jason says. Yeah, so, I mean, what is what is making it clearest for you there, Jason? Like, just getting the, the high-level view of how all four pieces stick together? Um, or is it actually just seeing how the actual table can be used? Monica's from Norway. Jumped in a bit late. There will be a replay, know, Monica. Don't worry. You won't miss out on anything. I actually just want to jump back a couple of slides quickly to ask I, you, um, okay. looking at the big picture, as Jason's saying, when we look at the full diagram and you see the flow is coming in at the initial assessment phase mm -hmm. and working its way around to putting changes in action. Mm -hmm. Is it then flowing back in to the monitor phase and it's kind of a perpetual cycle? You don't go back into assess or yeah. This I actually struggled with this a little bit because it it depends on on the client flow with your business. If if the changes you put into action the the the, the thing I was going for there was that in the update client you're getting that new baseline picture. So it would be semi redundant to go back with that client and get a new baseline picture because you already have a new baseline picture so they can skip right to the delivery. But in terms of putting changes into action, that's going to happen wherever it needs to happen in the process. Cause that's not necessarily related to your data collection. If you learn that you need to change, you know, you find out that this thing that the fitness world has been telling you is safe for 20 years, all of a sudden isn't safe, then you're changing your programming or, you know, so that, that can show up anywhere, but it just in terms of the client flow, if you're getting at the end of a period with a client and then you've reached out and you've got a new baseline, you can skip the assess part and go to monitor. Perfect. Cool. So, As you said, Karen, everybody's going to get all three of these. So mm -hmm. I think what will be great there is you can look at it from the from the high level perspective of how it works, see an example, and then start filling your own in and print them out. So that would be great. And Jason says, right now, any data collection I'm doing is sort of an afterthought. So it's nice to have a sense of what to be looking for while working with clients. And that, yeah, absolutely. I think if you're mindful of, as you go through the process, what should I be gathering? and just having a place to keep it, that's a huge jump forward, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right, Jason, so, he says on the side also, also curious about the day-to-day -day practical side of taking notes and keeping things organized. Yeah, we can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm good at my own stuff, but uh, yeah, this is, this is where uh, the systems guy shines a whole lot. <laughs> um, but personally, just on that, Deciding to take the time to make a plan for where you're going to put stuff and how you're going to label it is like 90% of the work. If you've got a plan for what to do with the data when it comes in, it, that works for you, whatever it is, you'll be so much more successful than if you just stick it places. <laughs> so we could talk about that for like a two day workshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah it's places yeah awesome that was amazing karen thank you so much and lou's There's got a, a question down in the question yeah we got a question down there from lou okay okay and i'm like ready to jump into questions i know you're not you're like slow, karen. no no i'm happy to jump in so okay we are i've just marked it as busy answering it so lou okay says if you have a membership community for the monitor phase, would surveys be the best approach while their membership is active? Okay, so for the membership community, what was I reading? Um, monitor, I feel like you could use a lot of different methods to get information from them because um, 
you're going to have all those data points that you're that are just already there. How many people are logging in every day? Um, that kind of metrics, like your key performance indicators in terms of like how many people are joining, how many the whole churn situation. Um, so you've got to have you'll have those things that you're tracking, and then you might have um, it's it's a little more passive, I would say, monitor is based on you already having your systems in place. So you might have a regular check-in with people. Hey, how are you enjoying the community? That kind of stuff, especially if it's a really long-term relationship, you might have a periodic check-in with people where you would send them like a personal email um, to reach out with a survey, like, how are you enjoying the community? I know some people who just did that with their community that I might've just gotten this week that was nice. And they're like, this takes three minutes. Just answer the question, 3.2 minutes. Um, so you could do that where you do have a, a physical, like reach out and check in with them, but also all that other data counts, like the churn data. There's um, an article at Process Street, P-R-O-C-E-S-S.S-T -S puts out wonderful um, informative articles on all sorts of things related to customer experience. And they have a, an article that was there, well, they, they basically show their entire churn prevention process for clients and communities. Like if this happens, like say they stop logging in so much, we send this out, or if this happens, we send this out. So they've got a whole process. I can totally share that with you, Lou, and post it somewhere. <laughs> If, if anyone else wants to see that as an example of they've used their monitoring to help them keep clients by checking in and saying, hey, is there something we can change? What can we fix um, in that kind of community and SaaS relationship? Yeah, completely. Nailed. Does that answer your question, Lou? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Okay, awesome. So. Cool. Caps and an exclamation point. Wow. You've got, you, you're seriously prepared. I really apologize for having to get minute, the door. So. My son's birthday is next week, so everything's... <laughs> right, so Karen, you can't afford to be. So we said up front that we're going to have a couple of ways yeah. that we can help. I can't afford, I can't afford to be behind. Aspects of this. So you've gone through the research framework and actually what to use with the data. And I know you were very generously had something that you wanted to share with people. Uh, yeah, basically, if anyone just wants to kind of talk this through a little more or just has some general customer research questions, I would love to offer some uh, free 20 room. minute calls and you can email me. I don't know if you have an email. I can just put it in the chat. Um, you can put it in the chat. Um, you could just email me directly and we can set up a time to chat. I'd love to help you if you just have a couple more questions about the framework or maybe how it applies to your business or just any more questions. Customer Amazing. research related, I can geek out about this. I'm totally taking you up on that. And just try so to well. help and any way I can. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I'd love to talk we'll to geek you. out about this anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I know. And then from it's my good. side, uh, Jason, you were right, I'll, I'll call you with my next assignment. Any question, help with the so actual it's... process side. So you'll see at the top, there's a link there to click through to the community that Karen was referring to. It's called Systems HQ. We are very thrilled to have Karen as a member. And really, it's the community is all about helping you see systems in action. So what we've had our members ask us about frequently is, how do I do this? And it's it's fine to look at it from a theoretical perspective of here's how you can put a process together. But it's even better when you see other businesses like you actually putting the processes together. So recently, we've had a copywriter show us her client portal and how, how she creates the client experience we had. It's amazing. We are super jealous. <laughs> and then we had we had so Ashley, a cool. uh, web designer. I'm just like I watched it like three how she times sets already. Up her systems for client management, but also for setting boundaries, which I think is a huge, huge thing for us as as service based businesses. Um, yeah, so the, it covers the spectrum of processes as well as the accountability and implementation side. So yeah. There was also to mention there was also mm -hmm. a recent mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. of one of the yes, members that, that was, was literally yeah. a really good way of doing this framework um lisa 
it was great. She had her, her intake questionnaire and, and how she went through the process and it totally fits within Amazing. this framework. And it was so if really you guys would simple like to check out the community and totally easy to execute. Join us, and so it was a great I'll example of how chat. to do this. So it's systems HQ community. And I would really urge you to um, take advantage of Karen's 20 minute call because yeah, the chats I've had with her have been informative to say the least and check out systems HQ. Yeah, just mm, have some. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so just we don't want to keep you guys too long. We've hit the hour mark. I hope that's been <laughs> valuable for you. It certainly has been for me. A big thank you, Karen, for, for doing that and putting together that framework. Um, for everybody, as we mentioned, all of those resources are going to come through to you. Um, we'll send you over the worksheets and you'll be able to download them, print them out, and actually crack on with this process yourself. Any questions, you can follow up. Karen at heykaren.com or james at systemsmatter.com. And yeah, any questions? Thank you again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. Replay is also coming out in about two hours' time. So have a great rest of the day. And now you can answer the, the door for any mail, Karen. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Yay. Hopefully that's it. That's it for today. That's it for the day. Thank you. Bye.